All right, everybody. Switch this back with the, the final little video here we're going to do on this uh, on my new Ender. <clears throat> this is the new build. Now I did turn it on, and I did go ahead and do the do the auto home on it. And so once you get once, once we get turned on, you can uh, just hopefully everything's out of the box. Yeah, fine. You can do some tuning. You can adjust some of the the steps and the steppers and stuff like that. I like just to see where it's at. I like to do an initial print to see where it's at. Um, I've had pretty good luck with just printing them right out of the box. Um, I know there's some videos out there where people have gone in and uh, you can set how much filament, the, the E steps is what they call it. Uh, I haven't gone into any of that or actually done any of that myself. I've just been printing them right out of the box. So let's just, I'm just curious. I mean, I'm probably gonna go ahead and set it all up on this one. But I'm just curious to see how this one does right out of the box with no adjustment, no whatever. Just the software program for this particular machine, modeled machine. I'm just, we'll see what it does. Now, I did have to lower my plate. Um, I lowered it almost all the way down so I could adjust the height, the Z height, when it come down on the zero stop. So if I come over here to, here, let me go back to the main page and so this is the main page how well how well can you guys see that I wonder uh, I see it fairly well let me see if I can adjust my little camera set up here my GoPro to where you guys can see this and maybe it won't be a glare I help any? Eh, that's not too, that's not too terrible right there. So, here's your controls. You got print, get your prepare, control, and info. The info I'm just gonna tell you what, what size it is. It's 250 by 250 width and depth of the bed, and it'll print 250 millimeters tall. So, controls, you can control your temperature, the motion, uh, your storage configuration, stuff like that. So, repair is what we want. So if we come up here, if you hit disable steppers, uh, if you put it in auto home, it actually engages all your stepper motors. They will stay engaged for a short period of time, and then it'll, it'll, it will uh, release them after a minute or two, whatever. But if, if you need to be able to move it so you, so you can zero it, then you can hit the disable stepper. So if I hit auto home on the machine, it will go through the process. And that should be, theoretically, uh, should be zero. Now, when you're leveling the bed, man, I don't know how I can do this where you guys can see. Once you get it zeroed in home, that's, that's where it's gonna go to every point, every time. On my OG Ender, the one you can hear running right here in the background, right here behind me, it's pretty much run nonstop for the last two weeks. Once I have it set, <clears throat> on the home, I don't adjust it. I don't mess with it. I don't do anything. I've been printing and printing and printing. You know, pop a pop a print off, put another print on. You know, turn it on, and I've been going, going, going ever since I started making these uh, meter boxes. And I haven't had to re-zero it. So, knock on wood. Once you get a good zero, you're fine on getting the bed level. Every now and then, going back double checking it, it's probably great. What I like to do is I like to get a thin piece of paper, like something like a notebook paper, not a not a heavy, heavy type printer type paper, but a thin, thin piece of paper. Uh, what weight it is, I can't tell you. And I'll come over here and I say, now I've already leveled my bed. I know I was going to said I was going to do it when. Uh... Now see right now, see everything's locked. So if I come over, disable steppers now, I can move the bed. So I need to move the bed a little bit so I can get this in here. Now, I need to build it. What I want to be able to do is I want to be able to fill this paper 
slide underneath this motor or underneath the nozzle and I just want it to barely touch so this adjustment motor right here if you're looking straight down on it you turn clockwise the bed goes up you turn counterclockwise the bed goes down so like right here it's just these little bit I turn the wheel see it's already starting to turn the wheel just barely dragging right there okay now something to think about is when you and I actually had this explained to me not too long ago and I never even thought about it before on this bed when you make an adjustment right here it's also going to adjust the, the opposite corner because this bed sits on two points in the middle right here so the bed's going to rock this direction so when you adjust here so now you want to slide this over here you want to slide this back here and you want to adjust here and see it's still it's even though i messed with it earlier it's just not quite right so i'll come over here and i'll keep tinkering with it and this may take you i heard some guy oh you, you can do it well you know one or two times around now I've tinkered and tinkered and tinkered with this thing because the most critical point is getting near zero getting it level now that ought to be close so let's go over here Closer. Ought to be close. Yeah, we're getting close. I keep saying that, and every time I come back to check it, it's always. That's pretty close. And then you want to, and when you're doing that, you also want to come back and you want to check these kind of in between it because what happens too is even though you're going this way, if you keep loosening this or raising this up, it'll pivot back and forth. But all you're doing, you're not being very counter, you're not being very productive because unless you raise the pivot point, it's also not going to allow your corners to raise it properly, also. So you'll need to come back and check. The opposite corners. See, I got that one a little too tight. It's close. Okay, and you can almost. I've, I've seen guys use a flashlight and they just keep they can see the gap with the flashlight it might be easier with a piece of flashlight than a piece of paper it's actually not too bad all right there we go that's not too bad now what I'll do um, in between prints when I'm doing stuff I'll either use Windex or I'll use a bottle of alcohol and I will wipe off the plate, remove any kind of finger stains, anything like that, anything that won't allow the print to stick. So I just want to wipe it off. So now we need to load the filament in it in the printer. I'm going to have to adjust this camera. So you guys can see what the hell is going on. Let me... Wish I had something better to hold my camera for me. One these, I got one of these GoPro stands and it, it's kind of half retarded. Does not like to... Uh, it's off balance really easy. Alright, 
that'll kind of get you the idea of where we're at. All right, here's our filament. There's our roll. You can't see the roll in the video, but it's right here in my hand. I cut a angled back, about a 45-ish degree angle on the tip of this thing. And you want to stick it inside this roller, inside the uh, hole back here behind the uh, 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 ball screw. And there's a lever, a spring loaded, and you got to pull this lever up to get it to release. And then you got to kind of, kind of play with it a little bit to get it to go into the other hole to be able to feed it in. Sometimes make sure it's straight too when you do this so it feeds in there. There it goes. Now, the one thing that my other printers don't have, which I might have to invest in some of these, this is a feed wheel. It allows you to feed the filament. through the uh the tube and i'm being dumb and i spun it the wrong way but i got that thing in there don't don't be like me don't spin it the wrong way guys all right you don't want to fight me all the way just making a 10 minute video turn into a 20 minute video because it's being retarded Dangle's not right. There it goes. All right, let's try this again. Wheel here. Make sure you feed that the right way. You can see it inside the tube. Now, what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to watch this thing feed through the tube, and you want to get it all the way up until you can just, just see it and stop it just before you go into the nozzle. Now, what we want to do, we want to come down here to our, our control panel. We want to come down here to heat PLA. Now while that's heating up, it'll take up to about 200 degrees. Once it gets hot, then you want to feed your extrusion, or I'm sorry, your filament into the extruder to kind of get it primed. Then after that, we can start a print. I'm going to print something on here to start with. It's going to be a oh timber the camera fell. So it'll be a something I'm going to be sending Panda. I don't know if you like it or not. It'll be my first print. I'm going to see what happens with the first print. I'm not going to show you guys because it'll be a surprise. You have to go uh, check out Panda's video and find out what it is. He may or may not like it. I don't know if they'll put it on a uh, put on a video or not. We'll find out. Oh boy! Brand new printer firing up. It's a bit stinking. Hey, you got a printer finished up while I'm over here doing this. So while that's finishing up, here we'll do a while that's heating up. We'll go cruise around the. I have room here, but graphics cards, new ones. All right, just that box. Look at that. Just finished up. It's all nice and shiny. Now that plate's still hot, so I'll give it a few minutes before I pop it off. Um, and what happens is, as the plate cools off, and the way these plates work, the box itself will actually shrink. And when it shrinks, it like pulls away from the plate and the covers or the lids they take shit yeah maybe 15 20 minutes and they just pop right off now 
what I can do is I have a knife. I slide a knife up underneath the edge here, and I can I can pop it off, which I'll do that in a minute. But that one just finished up. Took uh, for all those people that are wondering. There, nine hours and thirty six minutes, start to finish. And by the time I get it off and get, get another print going, it'll be ten or fifteen minutes probably. So we're looking at ten hours just to do the box. And then it's three hours to do, approximately three hours to do a lid. So now that's fired up. So let's run some extrusion in. Actually, let me. Disable steppers. Let me. Let me raise this up just a little bit. All right, let's feed this in here. Feed it in until you feel a little bit of pressure on it. Oh, and when you feel pressure on it, you can see. You can see the uh, filament. Ooh, that of there. Look at that. That's the first dribble right there, buddy. All right. That'd be it. All right, guys. I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. It's a quick one. Just simple uh, operation setup. Um, here, well, actually, actually, almost before I forget, let's do this real quick. You want to go into hit back. Just a second. Let me. I want you to see the title of the video. Uh, okay. That'll probably be all right. So I hit back. This is the home screen right here. So hit print. You come down to uh, whatever name is that you have it saved under when you do your do your uh, slicing. Now I do use Kira. Uh, I think it's called Ultimate Kira, Kira slicing software. So far, it's been the best one on these particular printers. So, and that's it. You select it to make sure it doesn't. Yeah, you select it, and it's up and running. Looks like the bed's, bed's preheated. If I did the preheat on the PLA, it's going to come down here, touch off. It's going to lay a bead, and let's, let's see what the bead looks like. I like looking at the bead as it come down. Now I'm using a 0.4 nozzle, so it's gonna be a little smaller, smaller bead than my other ones. I run a 0.5 and a 0.6 nozzle on my other ones. And there you go, that's the first line right there. Look like it's doing a good job. Alrighty, well, we'll let her print. This print's gonna be, uh, hopefully if all goes as well and it, there's no issues and problems with it. It's going to be about 18 hours. So why uh, try a little one where you can just knock out a great big one. All right, guys. Like and subscribe. Go check out my t-shirts. Get you a Space Goats limited edition shirt. There's not many of them out there. And I'll catch you in the next one.